In this episode, we're going to go over what is an API. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have some kind of understanding what an API is and you won't be so scared of the buzzword anymore. So an, an API is an acronym and it stands for Application Programming Interface. The easiest way I think to reason about an API is to think about the interface part. An interface that we might be used to is something like a website. You know, it has actions we can take and we might click a button and hopefully get some feedback. We can't just randomly click around a screen and hope that we get a result. We need to look at it and understand what we can do. So for instance, if we clicked a button to submit a form, we usually get some feedback to tell us that the action was completed or that there was some problem with it. An API has different users in mind. Instead of using a nice website with obvious actions and results, apps and software often need to interface with each other and they do that by using APIs. Think of this as when you are traveling and you need to bring a power adapter with you that fits local plugs. APIs are like an assortment of plug sockets that instead of electricity pouring out when we get the plug in the right adapter, we get data or at least a way to interact with data. APIs give applications a way to interact with databases and even other APIs without the user needing to know about all the magic going on behind the scenes. Just like you don't question the source of the electricity every time you plug into the socket in a wall. So an API is a way for one application to share data or software with another application. Now let's try build this mental image. Let's go back to the plugs example. If you have the wrong plug, you can't get electricity or use the socket. You have a very particular way you can use a socket. In this instance, we need a two pinned plug to get the electricity from this socket. If you're not using it properly, you will probably get an error and it might just feel like an error if you were to use something like a screwdriver and you try to use the screwdriver to get electricity, we can expect that we would get some feedback. You will probably be gently reminded that it is not the right way that the socket is supposed to be used. And with that little jolt or reminder, and I bet next time you won't stick a screwdriver into a, a socket, you'll probably go and find a suitable tool. So APIs can also give us back errors when we need them so that we don't misuse them. Just like electricity providers have an intended use of the plugs, like wiring them to your own meter and not your neighbors, this adds structure and reliability. APIs are similar because we only want certain pieces of data available to the outside world when we use them for security and so we get the expected outcomes. So with an API, we don't want to just expose all the sensitive data or an exact, exact line to a database. We want to expose the required data needed and safely. Just like the plug socket protects you from live electricity, the structure of an API protects the inner workings of the API and only exposes the pieces that are meant to be exposed. The most common sort of API that we use on a day-to-day -day basis is called a REST API. And I will use that in an example to show you a real example of an API. Trustpilot is a very common place that people go to to read reviews about different products and other bits and pieces on the internet. So they have a really nice API. And I thought it would be really good for us to have a little look inside so we can see how an API works behind the scenes so it can fetch different reviews for different products. In this example, we're going to use a get method. And a get method, just to pardon the fancy language for a second, is just like when we type into a URL bar and click enter, that just gets us some data back from the internet. And here we'll look at the URL. It might look a little bit scary at first, but then you'll also see it looks kind of like a normal website. Other than API dot, it is still trustpilot.com. And then it has a version of the API that's using. The product reviews is what we're looking for. It's going to have an endpoint 
with business units. And then we're going to give it in the ID of the product we want to get the review for. And then it ends with reviews just to notify that we're on the reviews side of things. You don't need to know all about this or how this specifically works, but I just want to show what's responded from this API. And in here, you will see that we get this weird, potentially scary looking object if you have never programmed before. But take a second to look at this and you might really understand that most of this is written in English because it's human programmers that have to write these things. So they are usually written in such a way that people can read them and understand them to write them into their programs. So if we take a zoomed in look at something here now, we will see the language of English. So that's EN and the content that this product was nice, but slightly too soft and the star rating and the display name of the user who gave it. So it's not so scary when we just take some time to really look at this data. And as you can see, it's not a very user friendly way to get data back. And that's why we'd usually expose this data to a user using something like a website. So in summary, APIs have different users in mind, and it's all about machine to machine communication. So I hoped this video helped you understand what an API is. And if it did help you, please like the video and leave a comment. And if you haven't already, please subscribe because it really all helps me with the YouTube algorithm. And until next time, happy coding.